Here we go. Step one in this question will be to read the question. So we'll see here that it says, hey, how long will it take for the cars to be 768 miles apart? So my party people, can you tell me in one word, what type of value are we looking for? What type of value are we looking for? Jay, firing straight away saying time. Okay, a lot more people agree, okay, sweet. And I agree, I absolutely agree. Because one way to tell is when it says, how long will it take? And another way to tell is if we look at the answer choices, they all are time values, they all end in hours. So for sure, we've begun the question, even if again, even if we're super anxious and we have no idea what's going on, we can get that first of many wins that we're gonna to need to go our way to get this right. So step one, we are looking for time. Blank hours. Now, yeah, it has hours and this is the second question in a row, but again, this may change very quickly. So that's why we need to repeat the correct and proper steps, checking and verifying every time. Now step two, let's read through the information. The first sentence here says, Two cars, starting from the same position, begin traveling in opposite directions. So for those of you who are here for the first time, that's actually a very important piece of information. And I'm gonna highlight this for now, and I'm gonna come back to it. Notice that this sentence doesn't have any numbers, with the exception of two cars. But again, this is very important. They start from the same position and travel in opposite directions. We will come back to that piece of information in a moment. So the first number that we truly see will be that car A travels at a rate of 80 miles per hour and then car B, 112 miles per hour. And then we have this last number over here, 768 miles apart. Going through math isn't the easiest thing in the world. So before we continue, I wanted to remind you that we have a plan set up for you start to finish to make sure that your math is all taken care of. It starts with the math basics. That's gonna cover all of your fundamentals from there, we have designated arithmetic reasoning and math knowledge courses with over 15,000 practice questions and step-by-step -step solutions to help you reinforce and build that confidence step-by-step. -step. And then to test that confidence, you're gonna have a gauntlet of practice tests waiting for you to take with step-by-step -step solutions included in each one. So that's how math works. Start with the math basics because if you're having trouble with decimals, fractions, negatives, any type of number, well, that's attributed to your fundamentals not being set and secured. So always remember, remember, your math basics comes first. So we'll definitely wanna write these values down. Let's go ahead and do so. Let me grab this highlighter here. Let's grab perhaps maybe a darker gray if we can. All right, let's try that out. So we see that car A, 80 miles per hour, car B, 112 miles per hour. So we'll see that we have car A, 80 miles per hour, car B, we see 112 miles per hour. Don't mind him breaking any laws. And then lastly, we have 768 miles apart. All right, John, I love it. You've been paying attention. You know exactly what's going on. I love it. So what do we have here, my party people? Let's zoom on into the information here, right over here, where, where we see A and B right behind me. What are those types of values? Miles per hour. What are those values going to be? <laughs> right? Yeah, those are both going to be rates. Because again, a rate is given away by basically conjoining two units, saying how much of this for every one of that. 80 miles for every one hour. 112 miles per one hour. That is a rate. So we have a rate here. Let me go ahead and grab our colorful friend here, blue. So we have a rate here and a rate here. That might be an issue. And again, that's gonna be rooted in the green highlight. We will talk about that in a moment. But lastly, right over here, we have 768 miles apart. My party people, what kind of a unit is that? What kind of a unit is that? Yeah, that's just a straight up distance. So let's take advantage of that. Let's write that out. Again, giving ourselves the best chance to get this done. 
this is a distance and let's circle that so now that we've identified again what we're dealing with now we can look at the grand scheme of things we're looking for the time it takes for these two cars to get 768 miles apart they are driving in opposite directions we have the distance we have these two rates we're looking for time that is going to trigger us to say clearly this is distance rate time but there's one little caveat the question is what do we do with the rates and so this is a quick little crash course and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to let you know that this comes from arithmetic reasoning unit five this is arithmetic reasoning unit five so if you were in the program or just started the program this week so don't worry if this is a little confusing you're going to find everything you need lessons got to practice speed drills practice tests in the course arithmetic reasoning unit five here's what we're going to do with those two rates in the case that you have two rates and again we're talking about two objects moving at the same time simultaneous movement when we're going in opposite directions to get that total distance you add them up you add them up if we're going in the same direction we subtract because we are trying to ignore the overlap we're trying to ignore what they've both traveled we only want the gap between them so if we have this car taking you know three miles this way this car going one mile this way we subtract to get the gap of two miles but if we have one car over here going three miles this way one mile the opposite way we add them because we go one two three four we add them up when we go opposite directions we will subtract them when we go in the same direction again i didn't say that for nothing that's something that you want to write down or again go through the unit to make sure you have everything sorted but in this case because we have opposite directions everyone does that make sense at least for now that this tells us to add the rates right on and so for those of you who came to the distance rate time classes between last week and the week prior i know you're pretty excited about seeing a problem like this and getting it down rather quickly is anybody here feeling that way that came to a class before and you're looking at this now and you're like wow this is actually easy let's go let's go feels good doesn't it feels good here we go my party people so the distance that we're trying to travel again is given to us right here is 768 so we'll fill that in and then we have our rate multiplied by time our rate that we're given is going to be the sum of these two rates given to us so if we add these together we are going to have ourselves 192 miles per hour that is the true combined rate because again opposite directions that's what's going to tell us that their combined distance is the sum of their distances so there we go 192 miles per hour multiplied by time and so lastly what we need to do is go ahead and divide both sides by 192. is anybody here intimidated by dividing these two large numbers is anybody here intimidated by that kendy being honest yeah Feeling a little intimidated anybody else be honest again this is where we grow we need to be honest about the apprehensions we have if we're not honest about that then it's going to be a lot tougher to grow not me after mental math practice i love hearing the attitude like that so here for those of us with not much mental math experience here's a nice little thing when you're dealing with larger numbers estimation can be your friend but you have to know how to estimate so here what i'm looking at is a value that's pretty close to 200 768 since i'm rounding to the nearest 100 i'll round that to the nearest 100 800. so it looks like we have about 800 divided by about 200. my party people if you wanted to make your life a little easier having a good guessing number to start with how many times would you say 200 goes into about 800. how many times would you say 200 about 200 goes into about 800 how many times do you think 200 can go into 800 or 2 into 8? What do you think we should start with? So I saw one person say 3, but the majority here is saying 4. Now, 
just to reinforce, just to help you, you know, reinforce why that may not be the best, 200 times three is 600, whereas 200 times four, that would be 800. So that would place us right around. And so let's take a guess. Let's see if we're close, because that'll help us see whether we're at four hours or three and a half. That'll help us see. So here we go. We'll try it out, 192 multiplied by four, and we get two times four is eight, nine times four is 36, one times four is four, carry the three is 760, oh my gosh. We got lucky. You know, we could have been off by a little bit, but we got lucky. And so here, boom, there it is. The time is going to be four hours. And there we go. So before you pay any huge amount of dollars or money to anybody claiming that they can help you pass the ASVAB, you should always consider what they offer for free. With us, we're gonna be offering our full program for free for a full week. All you gotta do is do that right there or scan that QR code and you'll get access to all of our classes, practice problems, courses, everything for a full week so you know exactly how it works and you have the exact confidence that you need to raise your score. Get started now. I'll see you in there.